for years and years and years and years, conservatives have pointed out that so many of the things the left said would never happen, that the left advocated for, wound up happening. There's no need at this point in uh, the late stage of the United States to rehash arguments over gay marriage or not. Uh, conservatives lost that argument, and I said all along that they should have made a federalist argument that uh, since marriage isn't in the Constitution, let each state decide for themselves, and every state just has to go along with each other. But the Supreme Court ruled otherwise, and uh, progressive advocates of gay marriage for years said that uh, a, a, mar- a same-sex marriage will not affect you. And then suddenly people started losing their businesses because they didn't want to go along with the agenda. And well, then they were immediately referred to as bigots, uh, Christian zealots, uh, bake the cake bigot. Uh, I wasn't going to affect you. It would never affect you. If you don't like it, don't have one. Uh, And then uh, we got to shut your business down because you didn't go along with the agenda. That's kind of, other than the legal issue of should businesses uh, have to cooperate and and the Supreme Court for a while has trended towards yes, they must, although I think that's about to change, uh, that that issue is kind of water under the bridge. What is not water under the bridge, though, is the transgender athlete issue, where for years we have been told it's not going to affect anyone, and yet now it is affecting particularly girls in girls' sports, in high schools and colleges, you had the uh, track and field stars, the transgender tra- track and field stars in Connecticut, who deprived some girls of scholarships, I believe, uh, certainly surpri- uh, deprived them of wins. You had Laurel Hubbard, the guy from New Zealand, who shut out some women who otherwise would have competed in the Olympics and then himself didn't do so well. And now you got Leah Thomas who changed his name from Will to Leah, who has smashed swimming records in an Akron, Ohio contest. Uh, He won the 1650 freestyle in record time and uh, left, according to the Daily Mail, rivals floundering in a 500 freestyle, beating them by 14 seconds. He competed in a women's swimming event between Princeton and Cornell and has regularly broken records as part of the University of Pennsylvania's team. And there's growing frustration by people that uh, Will Thomas, who is now Leah Thomas, swam for a couple of years on the men's team, not very successfully, becomes a woman, transitions and is suddenly shattering records. And we were told stuff like this would never happen and it wouldn't affect us, it wouldn't affect you, it wouldn't affect me, it wouldn't affect our kids, and yet it is. But it goes beyond this particular issue. Take critical theory. Uh, Now, a lot of businesses in this country don't call it critical theory what they're doing, but what they're doing is something called diversity, equity, and inclusion, DEI. Almost every company in in the United States of America has a DEI push where they wish to hire not the best, not the most qualified, but the most diverse. Essentially, what it all boils down to and the best way to explain all of this, particularly the DEI stuff, is that progressives failed to educate our children. And so instead of acknowledging the failures to educate our children, they must instead explain it all away by systemic racism. And they must bully companies into hiring based on skin color rather than based on core competence depriving highly competent people of jobs because of their skin color and seeding doubt that other people got their jobs not because of their competence, but because of the color of their skin. It's a level of neo-racism. It's a failure of our public school systems, and, and they can't acknowledge that. Uh, you've got, what's her name? The, the Nicole Hannah-Jones, 1619 Project woman. She's come out opposed to charter schools. Why is she opposed to charter schools? Slavery. 
that it treats black children like commodities. And those children need to be in public schools where everybody pays their fair share. Who cares about the results? The reason the public schools do so badly is because some kids get to go to charter schools. If they were there, it would boost their results and resources and parents would have to invest. So we must stick these kids against their will in an educational system instead of giving them choice. They can't acknowledge the public school system failed. And so as these kids are getting into colleges, they're being told, well, it's not you, it's the system. It's systemic racism. We didn't fail you. We treated you just fine. It's the whole system is why you can't get ahead. It's not that we screwed up your schools and used public education as a tool to indoctrinate you instead of educate you. It's that the whole of the American enterprise and its experiment in in democracy is a failure seeded in racism that goes all the way back to 1619 before the United States of America was even an idea. It's an embrace of failure. And now they got to rearrange everything in society to avoid having to acknowledge they failed. So now you got to have uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion enterprises. You have to send all of your employees into these very awkward, non, uh, non-data-driven orientation programs where they hear things like, if your boss wants you to turn and work on time, well, that's racism. It's a product of white supremacy. If your boss believes there's objectivity, well, it's a product of white supremacy. All of these things the left told us would never happen are happening, whether it's the transgender sports or people losing their businesses because they have conscience uh, objections to gay marriage, uh, or you've got people out there being harassed because of the color of their skin. These are all the things the left said wouldn't happen. Whenever the left tells you, don't worry, it's never going to happen, start worrying. The larger issue here, though, is what we are seeing across the board now in uh, a post-truth, post-modernist America where real objective truth does not matter. I go back to the story. This is from the Daily Mail. Let me read you the headline. Fury as transgender UPenn swimmer 22, who used to compete as a man, smashes two U.S. women's records in weekend competition and finishes one race 38 seconds ahead of her nearest rival. This is a news organization doing a story on the outrage of Leah Thomas, who is a man biologically, and chooses to go with the female pronouns. Even the news media isn't on the act. We've rearranged truth. We've rearranged reality. And if you complain about it, if you point out the truth, you're the bad guy. Thus, we arrive at our place in culture and society, the way the United States is organizing itself these days. So much of it has been about pushing the Overton window. You take these extremist positions on either side, and you just take the extreme position over and over and over and over again until people become comfortable with you taking the extremist position, and you've shifted the Overton window, so to speak, in your area. That's what's happening here now. And all of a sudden, those of you who actually embrace science, those of you who actually embrace biology, you're the bigots. And those of you who take a data-driven approach, you look at the failing school systems, well, you're the bigot. It's not the schools that failed, it's society itself that failed. You're the racists. At some point, you just can't get give in. I mean, ultimately, where we are in postmodern America is people on both sides want to bully everyone else. Uh, I I heard last night, for example, in Georgia, uh, I talked to a state representative who told me that uh, his colleagues are being bullied by people close to President Trump's team, that if they don't come out and support David Perdue, that they will be primaried. So either either go with the guy you don't really want to go with or else possibly lose your job, the bullies. The left does the same thing. The bullies, they shut you down. They harass you. In this case, they they send the Biden administration after you. Everybody now wants to govern and pursue their agendas through bullying. 
at some point, you got to stand up to the bullies on both sides, tribally, internally. I mean, the, the amount of pressure on the right to take a particular position is outrageous. You get organized efforts coming after people on the right who refuse to stake out a position that other people think they should stake out. In large part, they don't do it because they have conscious objections. But this happens on the left as well. You know, a lot of people in corporate America who are liberal are actually opposed to the whole diversity, equity, and inclusion effort. But the the HR departments, the CEOs and the like, they've all bought into it. They don't want to lose their jobs, so they say nothing. At some point, people have to stand up and say, this is madness. You have to look at Leah Thompson, a record-winning male athlete who's acting as a woman, and say, this is nuts. This isn't sustainable. You're depriving actual girls of actual scholarships and awards by having this guy do it. The the diversity, equity, inclusion, you're bullying employees into feeling like they are part of a problem where they've had no part in causing the problem, and yet you're telling them they are. This is nuts. At some point, you have to stand up to the bullies. But there's a problem. Do you know what the problem is? Well, there are a number of problems, but one in particular. Occasionally, in an ever-growing situation on the left and the right, a lot of the people who complain about being bullied are the bullies. A lot of times, the very people who say you must stand up and do something are the ones who are bullying, like the people who think the election was stolen and now everyone else has hell to pay because they refuse to go along with that lie. Or the people who are transgender activists who think they're the victims here, and if you disagree with them, lose your job, lose your scholarship, lose your opportunity. We're a nation that needs to figure out who the bullies really are, and we need to stand up to them. And culturally, I got to tell you, if you're on the left and you think you're the victim, considering how much of culture you control, you may need to think again.